when we hear a long line of Texas County Sheriff's SWAT and the OSBI, what does that tell you from your time with SWAT? Well, it tells me two things. Number one, it tells me that they're not going out to do an interview. They've got a warrant in hand. Uh -huh. They're going out to put a pair of handcuffs on somebody that they believe is dangerous. Uh, somebody in this case who has murdered someone and somebody in this case who they feel is a threat even to law enforcement. As a SWAT, a former SWAT member, what do you do in this kind of situation? You're arresting four people. Let's see the four people. So what you do here is, number one, you gain some intelligence on where you're going to. You gain some intelligence on the people, including the backgrounds of these people. Do they have any prior offenses? Or are they known to possess weapons, which obviously a weapon was involved in this type of crime? Uh, so you get some intelligence both on the people you're going to arrest as well as the locations that they may be. And you come up with a game plan and come up with a plan on what each team is going to do and how each team is going to secure the perimeter of the home and then a plan on the actual entry if indeed you have to make an entry into that home. You know what's interesting about what you're saying, Jim Shelnut, James Shelnut, Tim Jansen with me, a former federal prosecutor, analyst, Tallahassee Democrat, is the level of violence that a grandma slash mother-in-law will exceed in order to get that grandchild. Because in both Markle, where the Florida state law professor was murdered with the grandma, the mother-in-law, pulling the strings, and now in this case, where the mother-in-law slash grandmother is arrested, all it was that day is mommy was picking up the children at a designated location, the Four Corners Trading Company, to go to a kid's birthday party. That's all that was happening. Why do you have to shoot two ladies dead? One you don't even know. Why? Over a birthday party? Well, you know, in the Markell case, it appears that the grandmother was the one initiating the violence and get her, her grandkids back. We don't know enough yet in this case how this transpired. But we know a violent crime occurred in the car. The bodies were moved and they were secreted somewhere for some time period. And then the bodies were placed where they were found. So we don't know exactly what the grandmother's role was, but clearly she's involved in this just like Miss uh, Miss Markell, was. I mean, Miss Adelson was. You know, uh, another issue here, you, you have two locations this is significant, and I want to go to you again, James Shellnut, uh, 27 years Metro Major case and SWAT, now lawyer. Shellnut, we just saw in Sean Puffy Combs, a.k.a. Diddy, simultaneous raids um, going down on two, two sides of the country, and it was just very heavily orchestrated and planned ahead of time by the feds. In this case, you've got at least two, if not three, law enforcement LE units together, and they raid two places, make four arrests in two locations. That is a lot of planning and precision timing. Absolutely, and what they're trying to do is they're trying to maintain the element of surprise. You know, when you go to one house where one group of suspects is at, and then there's another group of suspects at another house, you know, you have to anticipate that somebody may call the second group and say, hey, we've got police here, which will give them time enough to possibly arm themselves, possibly time enough to escape. And if it's not the group of suspects, you know, people tend to know their neighbors. Often they have each other's numbers and way to get in touch with each other. So, yeah, it's, it's critical uh, both for the safety standpoint of law enforcement serving these warrants, as well as to make sure that the suspects you're looking for aren't tipped off and escape. 